Tokyo Central Business District, a temple to the Japanese work ethic. A stone's throw away is a staircase that leads up to the Atago Shrine. Many working professionals in the city climb these stairs, known as the steps to success, at least once in their working life. To the Japanese, they symbolize climbing the corporate ladder. But even getting to the work gods is hard work in Japan. <laughs> Worshippers here primarily pray for anything related to their careers. From new jobs and promotions to booming business ventures. The number of salarymen who trek here daily to besiege the business gods is a glimpse into just how obsessed the Japanese are with work. Japan's workforce puts in some of the longest hours in the world, clocking in close to 1,700 working hours per person per year, compared to 1,500 in the UK and 1,300 in Germany. But ironically, Japan is among the least productive global economies today. I'm Yumi Araki. I left Japan as a teenager, and now I'm back as a journalist to explore my country as it enters a new era. In this episode, I want to understand why the Japanese work so hard. Super happy! As the country grapples with the impact of COVID-19 and ever greater economic pressures, I explore if this unbending dedication to work still has a place in the hearts and minds of the Japanese today. Enduring rush hour in Tokyo is just one example of how committed the Japanese are to work. But the dedication to work in my country also manifests in other, often extraordinary ways. From the efficiency of our trains, to how our restaurants are run, down to the tiniest details in a shop window. Everyday mundane objects can take mythical forms here in Japan, even fruit. And if anything embodies the Japanese work ethic, it is this melon. Wow, priced at 32,400 yen, which is about 330 to 350 US dollars. Some have even been auctioned for a whopping 45,000 US dollars. These incredibly expensive melons are considered the pinnacle of perfection in Japan. But what makes a perfect melon? I'm heading 180 kilometers southwest of Tokyo to Shizuoka Prefecture to find out. Master farmer Yuko Yagi grows the most revered of all of Japan's couture crops, the crown melon, venerated for its taste and its aesthetics. ま、果物に向けての愛情っていうのはあまりないので、日本人はなんでこんなにこだわるんでしょうね。なんででしょうね。でもやっぱり面白いですよね。あの、面白いと本当にもうこればっかになっちゃうものを見てたくなっちゃ
あの今はあの自分がハマっているから頑張るし。To understand the hard work that goes into producing Japan's crown melons, I'm joining Yagi s a n g as she tends to her crops. Here, timing is everything. I'm not a stop watch. 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 I'm not a s t After 50 days of precision watering, the plants begin to flower. Wow, it's beautiful. But the hard work of raising them has only just begun. Yagi san sees the melons as her children, all individually beautiful. To me, they all look pretty much the same.、Mm. And just like many an overdoting mother, there is no end to her nitpicking. Yagi san's eye for detail, mixed with a certain obsession, Is quintessential of the Japanese work ethic. It's to achieve the best. And in Yagi san's case, it's to produce the perfect melon. One of the most important features farmers look out for is a melon's webbing. でこういうのをなるべく品質を揃えて管理ができるのは腕がいい。When you sort of walk through the process of how this is done and the amount of care and love that Yagi-san puts into the product, I mean, it's, it's sort of hard to dispute how much of a love of labor this is. And maybe it is, you know, worth the $200 plus dollars that it costs to buy these things. After 100 days of TLC, these melons are ready for harvest. But not all of them appear to live up to Yagi san's exacting standards. Only one in 1,000 melons are considered top grade and displayed at the markets not just as food but as edible works of art. Back in the farmhouse, I finally get to try Yagi san's famous crown melons. Wow, it's a l s h i All right. Let's try it. <laughs> Usually, when you have cantaloupe or other melon, it's like it's fine, it's just a fruit. This is like top notch, really sweet, really luscious. In just four years of farming, Yagi san has won awards for her fruit for two consecutive years. 父が亡くなった年の春作の品評会で私入賞したんですああもう2か月ぐらい父が生きてれば入賞が見られたかもしれない,いやでも天国から見てたんじゃないんでしょうかねういや本当これ食べたことない甘さですうん<笑>ありがとうございますよかったよかった食べれて<笑> In Japan there's a word for the kind of care Yagi さん puts into her work Kodawari, the relentless and uncompromising pursuit of perfection. In my mind, the word kodawari used to have a negative connotation. So, someone who can't see the forest from the trees, they're so into what they do, that's all they can see. With Yagi san and her crown melons, it gave a new meaning to me for what kodawari means. 
There's a phrase that Japanese people always say when people eat something really delicious, they're saying, ah, aijou ga komotte masume, which means, oh, there's so much love imbued into this. And I never really, in the past, have eaten anything that literally felt that way until I had this melon. Kodawari permeates almost everything in Japanese life, from food to design and even business. On average, employees here work more than 49 hours a week. That's six days cramped into five. But such unbending commitment to work comes at a cost. There's been a growing and disturbing phenomenon in the country that the Japanese call karoshi, death by overwork. To understand what it is about Japan's work culture that drives over 200 employees to their deaths every year, I've signed up to experience the worst place you could ever choose to work in Japan. Japan's renowned work ethic turned post-war debris into a first world economy. But by the 1990s, this economic giant was in a financial bubble. The bubble popped and growth shriveled from a high of around 7% down to 1%. Three decades later, the country can't seem to get itself back on track. But the Japanese are working as hard as ever. A quarter of full-time employees work more than 80 hours overtime a month. The result has been karoshi, or death from overwork. And a key driver of it are exploitative sweatshop-style corporations called black companies. My director, producer, and I have signed up for an event that lets people experience firsthand what working at a black company is like. These actors are playing managers and employees who are going to simulate scenes based on real situations at black companies, although names have been changed. <laughs> みんな全員一斉に成長したいと思います。よろしいですか。はい、よしよ。はい、行きます。せーの、一つ。私たちは正しい経済発展に努めます。一つ。私たちは正しい経済発展に努めます。やる気あんのかよ。な。もっと大き
あの今回、えー、健康器具を売ってまして、えー、目見て喋れよ、はい、ちゃんとなあちゃんと、はい、元気がないんだよ、はい、そんなやつこれ物買うかおかしいだろ買いません I know this is play acting but it's incredibly uncomfortable to watch バカ野郎どう思うんだお前おいちゃんとやれよ何も思わないのかおかしいだろうちょっとおかしいだろおいちょっとおいちょっとコミュニケーション全然取れないんだわなあちゃんと声出してなあバトンしてバトンなあバカ野郎って言ったけどバカ野郎あ,あ違うこいつは俺見るんじゃこいつ見てバカ野郎と殴ってるなな大丈夫大丈夫大丈夫こいつのためなんだからほらあ行って行って行って行って行ってほらバカ野郎 The lines between reality and fiction are getting pretty blurred for me や,やばいやばくないやばくないほら言ったら言ったら言ったらほらバカ野郎ほらほらちゃんとな俺感情オープンしてよなあありがとうございます。ね、ほら、これ言ったよ、お前。な、ありがとうございます。はい、みんな、せーの、はい、スーパー、ミラクル、ハッピー。ね、こういうことで。はい。oh my god <笑>。what's horrible about that, about that scenario is like。they make a hostage out of the person that they're trying to make an example of、yeah.。and so it creates a scenario where it's like。no you can't step in。because if you step in <笑>。that's gonna be you <笑>。It compels them even more to fall in line because you're watching it being like, oh god, I'll do anything to make sure that、I'm, that's not me.、I'm、right, exactly. That's definitely、right. a divide and conquer. Yeah. Yeah. So that、yeah. they won't form solidarity against the company and say, that's that right. That's exactly right. While specifics vary, black companies tend to hire younger employees who end up working over 80 hours overtime a month. They only get a 10 minute break a day. And they don't receive any insurance, benefits, or pensions. Employees are invited to participate in these black company simulations to raise awareness about their rights as workers. なぜそうなんて言うんでしょう我慢強いんでしょうかね私だったら本当にもう1日2日でこんなだったらもうやめてしまうっていう感覚があると思うんですけれどもブラック企業が生まれるのは日本人特有のメンタリティーのせいだっていうのはやっぱ大きくあると思うんですよね増山さん believes this mentality stems from a code of ethics developed by the Japanese samurai in the 17th century called Bushido Or the way of the warrior. 特に江戸時代から始まる武士道っていうのは主君のために命を捧げなければならないっていう考え方には日本には例えば武士道とは死ぬことと見つけたりみたいな感じでもう全てを捧げるものであるっていうことが日本人のやっぱ根本にあっておそらくそれが戦争でも使われていて。With Japan's economy facing its worst crisis since World War II, it seems work has become the be all and end all for many people. やっぱり日本の人々っていうのは会社に所属してるっていうことこそが自分のアイデンティティあるっていうことが多分強くあるんじゃないかなだからそれは自分のそのこう魂というか全て。The relationship between employer and employee in Japan has traditionally been for life. Since the 1950s, Japanese businesses have hired recruits fresh out of school. Trained them on the job and kept them until retirement. All in exchange for an employee's lifetime devotion to the company. やっぱりこうブラック企業とかののちょっとこう悪い時代が働く人たちはそういう日本人のマインドをちょっとうまく使ってるっていうふうに思いますね。Black companies in Japan have become so common, there is now an annual ceremony that gives an award to the most evil corporation of the year. Previous nominations include local firms, Fortune 500 companies, and even public broadcasters. At the risk of being labeled as one, our director calls it a wrap. Cool. Okay, okay, cool. Thank you. In 2018, there were over 2,000 work related suicides across a range of industries in Japan. 
I'm speaking to 41-year-old Fumiyoshi Shimizu, who has personally experienced how overwork can severely affect mental health. 14 years ago, Shimizu-san was one of the 800,000 workers employed at convenience store chains across Japan. Because of punishing schedules and general labor shortages across Japan, 24-hour stores are difficult to staff. Shimizu-san tells me his company refused to offer him support. Shimizu-san's dedication to his job reminds me of a pervasive Japanese phrase, ganbaru, or to persevere through hardship. But persevering on just three hours of sleep a day puts the body and the brain under enormous stress. A year into the job, Shimizu-san was diagnosed with depression, but he ignored his doctor's advice to take a break. For better or for worse, there is a deeply ingrained mentality in Japanese society that the group comes before the needs of the individual. Because Shimizu-san was put on unpaid leave, he asked the company to compensate him for his overtime hours. Shimizu-san took the company to court and won. Shimizu-san was awarded 15,000 U.S. dollars in compensation for his overtime hours and for the damage the work had done to his health. A rare outcome in Japan. で、the relationship between employee and employer in Japan reminds me of an abusive relationship where the victim keeps coming back to an abuser. A sort of lethal corporate devotion and reliance that has subsumed every other relationship in a salary person's life. I want to find out how leaders at the highest levels are tackling the epidemic of stressed and overworked employees. Japan's government recognizes that the country's work culture needs to change. Work life balance will be changed. 働きやすい環境を整えてまいります。In 2018, the government passed a work-style reform bill that introduced mandatory off days and caps on excessive working hours. Yet critics point out that caps can be extended for half a year during busy periods. 
back up to 100 hours of overtime a month. But there has been some change. To encourage a healthier work-life balance, some companies have introduced automated computer shutdowns at the end of the day, shaming workaholics with capes, and afternoon exercise breaks to help employees de-stress. I've heard of one particularly unique initiative that claims to ease the pressures of work. These salarymen have been sent here by their company for a form of therapy called ルイ活動は2、3分だけでも能動的に涙を流すことによって心のデトックスを図ることが、え、この10年15年の農学部の研究では分かってきました。今日はね、そんなあの、ルイ活動を皆さんにね、体験してもらいたいと思っております。Yoshida-san has a tough task ahead. According to an international survey on adult crying, the Japanese are among the least likely of all nationalities to shed a tear. So, I want to talk about the tears. Do you have tears today? No, I don't. Yes, for a week, I don't have tears. No, I don't. When do you have tears? No, I don't. いや、記憶にないです。記憶にないぐらい。ああ。うん、泣かないっすね。で、泣かないですか。ああ。はい。ありがとうございます。はい。今日ね、泣いていただけたらと思います。皆さんにですね、7本の映像を約30分ぐら
どういう気持ちですかその環境を変えない限りやっぱり変わりませんよね、うん、きっとね、うん、と思いますね、うん、なるほど,るほど<笑>、はい、その過労死が起きてるブラック企業があるってことはその根本的にな,なんていうんでしょうシステム上でなんかが問題があるってことですよね While there's been progress at recognizing the overwork epidemic in Japan, solutions like tear therapy may only be the band aid and not the cure for overwork in the country. But maybe there still is something to having a good cry at the end of the day. University students spend most of their final year preparing for the one event they believe will make or break their careers. Shukatsu, or job hunting season. An intense year long process in which thousands of students attend multiple job fairs, seminars, and interviews to secure full time employment by the time they graduate. Roughly 80% of Japan's graduates find jobs during shukatsu, fail to get hired, and the chances of finding work after graduation are next to nil. The stakes and the stress are so high that one in five students are said to contemplate suicide. I want to understand how the shukatsu system affects the lives of young Japanese and the nation's work culture. But before I join the job hunt, I've got to dress the part. Shukatsu has strict guidelines for interview attire. The first rule of Shukatsu suits must be black or navy blue. And the color of a blouse is usually white. 見せるっていうところでいくとやはりこう無難なというかどなたにどなたに見られてもきちんとしてるなっていう感じが伝わるのが白なので白の無知を選ばれる方は多いですかね、うん、はい。Women are also advised to keep makeup and accessories to a minimum. Though there is one sartorial choice that female students do get to make: to wear pants or a skirt. そうですね着こなしのあのー。まあ、ルールというかマナー的にはちょうど膝の半分膝頭が隠れる程度が理想とされてます、うん、理由は椅子に座った時にあまりにも短すぎるとやっぱりちょっとこうセクシーな印象になりすぎてしまうこともありますので<笑>相手にどう見られるかっていうところがやっぱり大事なのでみんなと同じような服を着てるとあんまりなんか印象に残らないですね、はい印象に残らないことはあると思うんですが、まあ、あのお話の中で自分の経験をしっかり語っていただいて自分の個性をアピールするそういうことで個性をこう出していく方の方が多いとは思いますなるほどはい。I set aside my misgivings about the bland suit and try it on いかがでしょうかこうスカートいいですね It's actually a pretty comfortable suit テストパスですパスか。<笑> you know, you typically do more than one interview a week, every day essentially. So, if I have to do this every day and these are machine washable, not too bad. But the individual in me can't help it. やっぱり黒だとなんかちょっとつまんない気がするので、<笑>あの違うパターンのついてるやつとかありますか？はい Right, so this is the more outlandish choice because it is not black.、Um, it's blue, navy blue, way different than black. It has one button instead of two, so the chest area shows a bit more. 
Maybe too risque on your first interview, but it's still pretty conservative suit in my opinion. Like I could walk into an interview with a financial firm and they'd take me seriously. If I walked into an interview with creatives, it'd be like, you know, you can be our accountant. I can't say the suit's aesthetic represents who I am, but maybe that's not the point. As I'm thinking about what distinguishes myself from somebody else, you know, in a prospective interview, it's the ideas, it's the thoughts that actually make the difference. So if you can take that sort of, oh, what am I gonna wear out of the situation? Maybe it is that you can actually just focus more on your responses. With my standard suit in hand, I'm ready to find out how Japanese students prepare for the dreaded job hunt. To prepare thousands of students during shukatsu, or job hunting season in Japan, there is a billion-dollar industry that provides guidance on everything from aptitude tests and job attire to resume writing and interview etiquette. And I'm diving into this world. I've joined a workshop that teaches students how to navigate group interviews. It's a common practice Japanese companies use to whittle down prospective candidates. Consultant Yuki Kondo is giving the students tips on how to stand out in the crowd. The class is splitting into two teams for a mock group interview. My group, Team A, are the prospective job candidates who have to prepare a presentation on a given topic, while Team B play the part of company recruiters assessing how the students engage in team discussions. The stress around the table is palpable. Everyone wants to get a word in. The competition is fierce, and it's not easy to get a word in. With only a short window of time, the students have to make every sentence count. ま、Sometimes it pays to stay silent. That was really stressful. I mean, just observing the students was really, really impressive. But the thing that she's trying to encourage is thinking sort of not just academic smarts, but street smarts. How flexible are you? How analytical are you? The stress of the job hunt doesn't end here. Just getting invited for an interview in the first place is a huge undertaking. And getting your foot in the door, it starts with the resume. I've joined Satoshi Sekiguchi, one of the students from the workshop at his meeting with a career counselor to go over his job application. 
Students typically submit between 10 and 100 applications to increase their chances of getting an interview. And here in Japan, they are traditionally handwritten. 手書きの履歴書とかですと、まあ、丁寧に書いているかどうかとか字が汚いとか字がきれいに書いてあるかとかでもそれってあんまり関係ないですよねその自分の才能、うん、結構そもそもその書類をパッと見て、まあ、大きな企業様とか何万通も届く企業様ですと正直全部内容見れないんですね。まあ、そうですね In Japan, companies aren't interested in the hours you've spent getting the font and layout of your CV just right. Resumes are more or less the same format across the country. Companies believe filling all these boxes in by hand will reveal a candidate's true personality and help them find the perfect long term match. こうなりたいなとかこういう働き方したいなっていうのはえっと関口さんとかであったりしたんですか、うん、なんだろうなこうやっていてなんかこう結局なんかでこうで僕がなんかこう例えば社会を良くするためにはってなんかあんまりよくわかんなくて、うんうん、なるほどまあでもなんかずっと迷っなんかあんまり明確な答えを出して生きてないんだなとは思いましたね<笑>常に、うん、自分のことを考えるのが苦手というか。サトシ is not alone. A common concern among students is having no idea what kind of job or company would suit them. まあ多分自分と向き合うっていうところがまあ一番ちょっと自分の中でまあ苦痛になってしまったりだとかまあなんかモチベーションとしては下がってしまうところはあるとは思うんですけれども逆に言うとどの自分を出したら一番自分で楽しいんだろうとかじゃあその時の自分でいられるような会社を選んだら楽しく働けるんじゃないかなっていうふうには思うので。Though lifetime employment is on the wane, the average Japanese worker will remain at the same company for 10 years or longer. To me, committing to a long term relationship at such a young age feels like being pressured to marry someone you haven't even met. まあ関口さんみたいに、まあ、ちょっといろんなものを試してみてあこれがいいんじゃないのかなって言って、まあ、さその先こう道を狭くするというかあの、まあ、これに専念するっていうパターンの方が多いと思うのでどうなんでしょう就活システムっていうのは。今すぐに変わるかさ正直変わらないんじゃないのかな時代の変化でだいぶ変わってきている中でやっぱ変えていかなきゃいけない部分でもあります Many say a revamp in the shukatsu system is long overdue The shukatsu system in a way feels like it requires a lot out of people to know exactly what they want and the stakes are really really high and that's why I think people are really really stressed out You know, I have to imagine that there are many people who just go through the motions and go work for a place without really having to think about is this where I want to be? Is this where I'm best suited? I'm curious to know what happens to people when they opt out of Japan's rigid employment system. I'm meeting 39 year old former architect Kashiwa Hang. Who quit his job when he was hospitalized from overwork four years ago? He's been playing the handpan ever since. でもそれから離れよう、もうもういいやっていう人って結構度胸が必要だと思うんですけど。そうですね。本当はそういうしたいふうにしたいけど。あのそうすると、まあ、社会的な立場のポ,あのポジションだったり失ってしまったりとか。These days, Kashiwa earns a modest income from performing and teaching the handpan. もう全部自由、毎日が自由なんで、全部自分で決めれるし、行きたいところに行けばいいし。His way of thinking is rare in Japan. Only 17% of Japan's labor force is self employed like Kashiwa, compared to 25% in South Korea and 35% in the US. Why do you think that Japanese people are not 
でもすごい自分の気持ちに正直に生きていられる本当は夜遅くまで働きたくないけどあの上司に言われたから働きますとか会社,な会社だからみんな遅くまで働いてるから自分もやらないといけないとかそういうのがあったんですけどでも本当の気持ちはそうじゃないじゃないですか。どちらかとというと自分の心ににちょっと素直になろうと過去の人生 VS の人生、うん、どう比べますかサラリーマンの時はやっぱり収入はすごい安定してるけども幸福度はやっぱりすごい低かったですね、うん、でも今は収入はすごいこう不安定ですそんなに多くない幸福度はやっぱり高い、うん、そこが大きな違いですね収入と幸福度そのバランスがやっぱり両方ともいい方がいいじゃないですか。そうですよね。はい、理想的に、えー。Kashiwa has invited me to join him at his workplace on the busy sidewalks of downtown Tokyo. Unlike his old office, the work environment here is friendly, relaxed, and engaging. And Kashiwa can call it a day whenever he feels like it. I think Kashiwa Hang is among the growing number of people who are of working age in Japan who are start starting to get tired of sort of the traditional cultural routes of going to work. I think there's a lot more introspection about who am I outside of being a worker and you know, what are the possibilities that are out there. For so long, working hard has been synonymous with what it means to be Japanese. I've seen some of the best of that work ethic. Wow, it's delicious. And also some of the worst. I think Japan is at a precipice point where it's trying to preserve the traditions of how things used to be done with new paths that are being forged about how to go about work life. As the country charts choppy economic waters in the future, the nature of work will change. And Japanese society's relationship to it will also have to change tack. Hey, 